What's the saddest thing that happened to an old school friend you don't see anymore? I'm a cop and a year ago I was called to a robbery in progress at Walmart. I drive up and outside of the doors there's a crowd of people trying to restrain a young woman. She was fighting like crazy to get away. My partner and I go right in and cuff her. As things cool down she turns around and says I know you. We had spent tons of time together in high school in the same organizations. Nice. Fun loving gal with a lot going for her. Now she was getting high and trying to steal Legos from Walmart and injuring employees in the process. It was one of the saddest arrests I've made. She told me she just wanted to get her kids some toys but the drugs were screwing up her life and she couldn't afford them. Here was this girl that everyone thought was beautiful, both inside and out. Now a deteriorated junkie in the back of my patrol car with a sizable prison sentence waiting for her. Reminds me of the judge who recognized the defendant. My longtime friend left for the army after high school. He was always willing to help people and do everything he can to make your day just a little bit better. On his third or so year he came back to my hometown on leave and accidentally pulled out in front of a dump truck and got t-boned. He's been in a coma for over 3 months with a broken back and severe brain damage, but just said good afternoon to his mother yesterday. I lost my brother in an accident 6 months ago, and I am in tears of joy reading that your friend was able to speak to his mother yesterday. I have been watching my mother grieve and I would not wish it on anyone. A parent's grief is unimaginable misery. Old bro from high school ran into his girlfriend's burning home to try and save her, but found that she had been stabbed to death by her ex-boyfriend, and it was him who caused the fire. Ex-boyfriend got 16 years in prison. Had another friend kill himself his senior year of high school. He had a full ride to university for football. So intelligent. So kind. Blew his brains out in his room one day. After his long term GF broke up with him. Family wouldn't even let the GF attend his funeral. BC they blamed her. Even though she was absolutely devastated. Very sad. I was really good friends with a girl from elementary school up until high school. She started hanging out with a rough crowd and pretty much told me to f off. Life moves on. I move out of town. A few months ago, my Facebook feed blows up with did you hear about what happened to friend I pull up the news story and she was messed up on drugs and killed her own 2 year old daughter. She is in prison now. Had a degenerative back problem. In his late 20s, began a series of surgeries that essentially rebuilt his spine from top to bottom. Shortly after the last procedure, went to visit his parents up north for Christmas, slipped on ice on their front steps and smashed all the work that was done, committed suicide within a week. Dang this is the one that got me. She was an artsy and bright girl who was in my English class. I didn't interact with her much, but she was always very kind. She pursued a PhD in philosophy. I ran into her at a train station 15 years ago and we exchanged a couple of emails after that. Two years later she went out for a bicycle ride in our hometown and disappeared. Our hometown went through a massive search for several days. The entire city seemed involved. Her body was found near a large river. She had been assaulted and killed. No suspect was found until two years later when they caught a killer, who subsequently confessed. Lost a buddy recently. He was a partier in high school but he never hurt anyone and was a genuinely good guy. We played on the same baseball team all throughout high school. He got out of the small town we grew up in and got a degree all on his own. He met a very amazing girl married her and had a beautiful baby girl. Two weeks after she was born he was walking back home from a friend's place down the road. He had had a couple of beers and didn't want to drink and drive. He was walking on a sidewalk on the far side of a ditch and got hit by a drunk driver. The driver somehow made it across the ditch and was able to drive off. His poor wife searched for him for days and it was all over Facebook. It was truly gut-wrenching to see her plead and ask if anyone had seen him. Especially so soon after he had just celebrated his baby girl being born. The irony in this it's freaking sad. Best friend in elementary school got deported back to Russia with his abusive parents. Used to spend all day at my place to avoid going home. This one makes me really sad. My brother's best friend was throwing a football around with some kids at s fundraising event for someone who had been in a terrible car accident. The football got stuck up in a tree, so he climbed up the tree to get the football down. He tossed the ball down, 
then started to make his way down the tree, and lost his footing and half jumped halfway down the rest of the tree. He landed square on his heels, while standing he looked straight into the faces of the kids and said that hurt. He then fell over and passed away. He had severed his spinal cord from the impact of the fall at the base of his neck. Still miss your everyday Dale. Internal decapitation. That's rough. She was a really smart and creative girl but had a horrible home life. Her dad suicided by jumping in front of a train. Her mum was psychotic and did messed up stuff like killing her pets in front of her. She ended up dropping out of school early and dated abusive older guys who got her into hard drugs. Got his face blown off by an IED in Afghanistan. Survived but his nose and one eye are gone, and he has some severe scarring. He'd just gotten married before going down there, but his wife apparently couldn't take seeing him like that and they divorced not long after. I had my first girlfriend in 8th grade. I really liked her. She was my first kiss. We were practically inseparable for almost that whole year, which is a heck of a long time for a middle school romance. She ended up going to a different high school and we drifted apart after that. After I graduated I would sometimes get drunk and look people I used to know up online, but I could never find any trace of her. Years passed, and I stopped thinking about her as much, but I did still occasionally try to look her up, always drew a blank. Finally, 15 years after 8th grade, I found something online. It was her obituary. She had died of cancer 3 years earlier. She was survived by her husband and 5 year old daughter. Same. Broke it off with HS love as we left for college. She married. I married. All okay. Found 10 years ago she died of cancer leaving husband and and girls. 10 miles from here. Frick. I would have visited her near end if I'd known. She was my best friend in elementary school. We shared a hobby outside of school that meant spending a lot of time together and remained good friends through junior high, though at school moved in different social circles. She was gorgeous and popular, me not so much. I moved away right before high school and didn't see her again, though we remained Facebook friends. Last year she was found dead in her apartment by her parents after nobody had heard from her in a week. She died due to complications from an eating disorder which I knew she had struggled with for a long time. It's heartbreaking to think of her dying alone that way. She died of cancer. We lost touch over a boy. Of all things, she had a crush on my high school boyfriend. She got cancer in her early 20s, lived for over 5 years, but ultimately lost the fight. She kept an online journal which I eventually brought myself to read after she passed. The hopeful entries were the worst. For years she was convinced she would get better. I don't know. Sometimes hope is the thing that keeps other people close. When you lose hope, others lose hope and then you are just a sad bunch of people. My dad died of cancer and was hopeful to the end. On his deathbed he basically told us he had held out hope because we needed that and he did it for us. He asked us to stop hoping and just let him go. And we did. Played basketball with these two twins. One guy was 6 feet 8 or so. Built like a bean pole and the most carefree guy ever. To the level of irresponsibility sadly. The other was 6 feet 2 and built like the meanest linebacker you've ever seen. They couldn't have looked more different or acted more different. But thing is, they really were best friends. They were great guys and great players. Fast forward to maybe 5 years after high school. I see the linebacker dude at a conference or something. I'm not sure exactly the context. But he's a software engineer now, graduated from a good school, got a good job. I'm so happy for him. I ask about his brother. He goes super frown, and tells me his brother got leukemia or some other horrible disease. I honestly don't remember which, but basically he got sick like a month after graduation, and terminally, and rotted away and died. The guy was almost in tears telling me. I felt horrible. I gave him a huge hug I didn't know what to do. It was so weird. I went back home, and asked a few friends who I was still in touch with, and the one guy said it was worse. He got whatever disease, which apparently is genetic runs in families, so the twin still has to be haunted he'll get it. But then it didn't actually kill the 6 feet 8 dude. The 6 feet 8 dude killed himself cause he didn't want his mom and brother to have to take care of him. The whole thing was like a punch in the gut. Holy frick. Just after high school. A friend accidentally drove his snowmobile through a barbed wire fence, decapitated, 
don't snowmobile during a snowstorm. My friend joined the army and was deployed twice to Iraq. He was discharged and came home with severe PTSD. He couldn't hold down a job and was on drugs from the VA until after about 6 months they decided he was cured. Then he got into doing crack and started carrying around a gun with him. The last time I saw him he was heading into the mountains at 2am in the middle of a blizzard saying this was the only way to get fresh powder. I haven't seen him since and I honestly thought he had died but I recently found out he was sent to prison after shooting his crack dealer and robbing him. Moved to Bakersfield and turned into a gangster. He came to visit a couple times but haven't seen him in 5 years. Got Miz. Went from Doc. I have this twinge in my neck to being bedridden. Catherized and now I'm just waiting to die in 24 months. He was a nice guy who quit being an attorney to become a carpenter by the ocean. He was a keen surfer. He went to Paris for the weekend to watch the Eagles of Death Metal at the Bataclan. Came back in a box. We lived in dictatorship government. We left the country when I was young but my friend stayed there. His family was anti-government and very active in protests and demonstrations. One day, the government came to his house and arrested his father and brother. Being a corrupt system, the police could do anything they want against protesters and demonstrators. They hung his father and brother in the public to scare the protesters. When this happened, he fled the country with his mother. The day he was leaving, he called me and told me that he was going to Turkey for a while. That was 11 years ago. I have been trying to find him but I think it is almost impossible. Morteza, if you have read this, it's Ali. Please contact me. His heart stopped working. This was around 9th grade. Edit. They had no idea he had a heart condition until he died riding his bike near the breach on a beautiful day. The bubbliest, brightest, funniest, most gorgeous girl in the class below me at school got heavily into drugs. Burned out, glazed eye, train wreck. Breaks my heart. We lost touch after high school but he went ultra left wing and joined various protests groups. He then became disillusioned with it. So he set off on a bicycle trip around the country. Stumbled upon some weird cult and joined up. In the process surrendering his phone and any link with the outside world. His Facebook page, with pleas from friends and family alike for him to get in contact, is a fairly tragic read. The bike ride around the country actually sounds like a really cool experience though, minus the cult joining part. She and some new guy she just met, just recently murdered a man in a robbery. She was a sweet, cute, honor student. Drugs. Drugs. One of them was mysteriously killed during a trip to a third world country. The family is still trying to clear things up. Another who already had mental issues during high school, ended up in a mental asylum. She died, age 21, while on a study abroad in Australia, hit by a bus crossing the street, totally senseless, random, awful act and she had to die in the middle of a street 10,000 miles from her family. It's been decades and it still makes my voice crack. He died, ALS at age 35. A noble and kind mind slowly imprisoned in a body that eventually decides to kill him. She died. Took an ambient after an international flight and sleepwalked right off a hotel balcony. I think of these because they are just so random. To me. When you're a kid and you work out the idea that we're all going to die one day. You. Or at least I did. Figure it's going to be decades from now. Old and surrounded by loved ones. Quietly in the night. You know crap like this happens. Because you watch the news and you read the papers, or internet or whatever but the idea that it would happen to someone you know. Someone good and special. Someone who deserved better. But I guess that's the thing. We all deserve better. And the world doesn't always cooperate. Bad crap happens and sometimes it happens for no good goddamn reason. And that makes me very, very sad. You've encountered the lost treasure of Captain Gus Fishhead. Subscribe to receive some of his gold. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.